<clears throat> okay, repair log number two. I got a shipment of Sims uh, in from eBay. Uh, 80 bucks for 10 of them, so not a terrible price, but it would have been really nice if it were uh, the 72 pin one and I could get it for like 30. Uh, so here they are. I'm going to dump them out one handed because that's a good idea for the sake of making a video. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are unmanaged or whatever, un, uh, controlled. They were saying something about that in the manual. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I've got eight slots and ten chips, so two of them are going to be left out, and I'll go sell those on eBay or something. I don't know. Uh, let's find out what happens. And there it is. 128 megabytes. Okay, now that that all checks out, here it is. Eight modules, 32 megs per pair for a total of 128. As it turns out, there's uh, another RAM slot over here. I think that's the program RAM, uh, which I would never use, and I don't really know what the point is. So that's what that does. Uh, and now I want to kind of assess the damage because there's some there's some buttons on the front panel that really don't work very well some that are very close to dying. And as it turns out, this thing has an extra SCSI cable in it that just links up to the external SCSI adapter, and I should have just used that in the first place, but I didn't. Um, so I ordered another one. Uh, the SCSI 2SD isn't here yet, so still waiting on that. Other than that, um, yeah, I'm going to take this panel off by taking every other freaking panel on the thing off first. Here we go. Okay, step one is complete. Just the backlight power board took four screws and I think four connectors. I really hope I can follow the manual to get this thing back. I almost said I hope I can remember, but thankfully I don't have to do that. And audio ports board is out. Not much to report. Uh, two of the four screws were missing, so it was extra easy. And now the sampling board's gone. Got a mess of ribbon cables kind of just laying around here, but they'll all come together. Just in case you're wondering, there's about a five minute break between these uh, recordings where I'm actually removing the thing. I don't have a setup to record the removal, and even if I did, it would just be so much memory it wouldn't be worth it. It's all in the manual. Don't worry about it. It's pretty easy to follow. Uh, we're almost there. One more board, and then I get to actually take out the control board. Okay, there were a lot of cables on that one, but the audio board came out uh, right after the audio I.O., which is just the plugs. And that's it for the uh, prerequisites. So now it's time to take out this whole board. Actually, I think I might need to take out this, this first, but that's the idea. Well, here it is. This is the control panel. In the process, there's this like sticky felt stuff on the top that doesn't seem like it's supposed to be there. It's not mentioned in the manual, but it forced me to twist this thing up this way instead of back this way like I'm supposed to. Um, and a couple of the keys with their tiny little plastic welded connectors uh, fell off the board. Just two of them, um, as far as I know. Uh, everything seems pretty normal. And, I mean, I'm going to have to take some of these off. I'm going to have to force some of them off anyway. It's just just annoying. Um, so, yeah, a lot of this stuff looks fine. I know which buttons are bad. Um, there's this pretty unusual looking micro switch beneath them. If you can see that. It's, uh, it's rectangular and tiny. So I'm going to get some measurements on that and see if I can order a, an equivalent on Mouser. And uh, I had to open it up tonight because I don't have a lot of days left at home still. Um, and if I get parts, I got to be able to put them in right away. So that's that's my plan. Just got to get a bunch of micro switches. Uh, some particularly bad ones right here. It clicks, but it never actuates. Uh, pretty much all six of these are pretty unacceptable. These ones don't click, the up and down arrows. I don't think that's by design. Left and right are fine. Um, 
the one button doesn't really work very well, neither does four. Really, I should I should be trying to replace as many as possible, but I really don't want to do that. So yeah. I guess the next report will be when I get the SCSI or when uh when I figure out what buttons what the buttons are and they come in the mail. So see you then.